What is going on, everyone? It's me. I'm back. It's Rag to, Rags to Riches, the owner, operator, and principal of the Bella Chow Fund, a lender during the day, a hedge fund manager by night, and then occasionally when I'm still trying to caffeinate at the wee early hours of the morning, I come here to talk about the markets because, you know what? This is just my life. I love it. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I want to take a moment of pride to congratulate anyone who decided to not take my financial advice because none of this will constitute that, but to go out and educate yourself about the last market that I spoke on when I had a last video, and that being cryptocurrency. Um, as expected, the launch of the ETFs was an amazing, powerful, bullish catalyst which brought in so much demand and interest into the space. Bitcoin reached an all-time high of over $70,000, still trading around those ranges, and we're waiting for the halving event for any further buying pressure. Um, and then the altcoin markets went on a tear as well. So for anyone who decided to get interested in the videos that I had posted, one, because I haven't posted in six months because you know I'm lazy, I'm glad you decided to do your own research to make some investments <clears throat> and stack that freaking cash baby let's go um i'll have to make another video on this at some point but my portfolio is up 400 percent and uh i hate to be like that guy who says i told you so but i mean kind of did now um like i did tell you back in the early summer summertime of 2023 i have found another opportunity which i find important and i must share with you and i come to you to tell you about this opportunity not because i want to screw my own position because i already bought in uh sorry <clears throat> so take that as a cautionary tale as you will but because I think this is such a revolutionary product, I just solely want to talk on the fund, its structure, how it's implemented, and where I think it's a good place within an individual's balance sheet, especially if they have a higher than average risk tolerance. So let's talk briefly about suitability. If you are old and about to retire, this is probably not for you. If you were someone that doesn't have an emergency fund saved, this is certainly not for you. If you were someone that gets uncomfortable with the sight of volatility, this is not the asset class for you. In the same way that cryptocurrency is not built for everybody, neither is this asset class, and let's just get over with the introduction, it's private equity. Now, the first question you might be asking yourself is, well, just knowing the general audience that might be watching this video, what is private equity? Well, private equity, simply put, is ownership interests in p companies that are not publicly listed. When I say a publicly listed company, I mean a company that has raised capital from either the primary or secondary markets. Primary markets is when a company decides to sell its shares directly to the public. The secondary market is when shares of an existing company are being traded between individual investors who own interest in said company. Think Apple, think Google, Think Facebook. If you can go onto your Robinhood account now and buy it, that is a publicly traded company. Traditionally speaking, private companies are not able to be invested in by the retail public. And why is this? Because it's a more opaque market. There's less regulatory disclosure. You don't need to report mark to market risk, meaning if the underlying value of the company changes, you're not going to have visibility into that at a day's notice. Private equity, though, is investing in, generally speaking, much earlier stage companies, companies that are rapidly growing their capital base, companies that are using leverage to acquire new businesses, companies that are growing at a handle that is multiple times faster than the general U.S. and global economies. And for that reason, institutional investors have been lagging into this asset class, increasingly so, and they've seen immense, insane, rolling 12-month returns. <clears throat> now, why do I bring this up for you today if you normally can't buy this unless you're accredited? And by the way, I'm still addicted to caffeine, so bear with me a moment. Ah, energy drinks, baby. Because we got to get hyped. We're live. So I bring up private companies because there is a fund that just launched called Destiny Tech 100. Why do I bring this up? Because the founders and owners of this fund originally began as a venture capital fund that started Forge, which allowed individual investors to get access to late stage venture capital companies. 
And do you know what these madmen somehow pulled off and got approved? Not approved, at least able to be listed by the SEC on public markets. They made a closed-end fund which invests in these underlying assets. And I want to speak about it because I just think it's the darndest, coolest thing ever. And returns have been popping off the charts. So, let's get into it. If you can see my screen, just briefly speaking on the 10-year rolling returns of private equity, we have dark blue line, all private equity, the S&P 500 in the light blue line, the MSCI World, the orange line, and the MSCI USA small cap in the purple, magenta, some kind of color line. But as you can see, private equity in majority of investment periods is going to outperform the S&P 500, the global economy, and small cap stocks. Why is this? Because we're investing in much earlier companies, which a much greater run rate to grow with a very small market cap in a very small market share. And for those companies that are successful, whether or not they go public at all, may or may not be relevant to the investor who wants to hold in those assets because of how rapidly they're growing. Going into the public sector is an extremely regulatory and challenging process for companies to do. You need to disclose information. You need to report on a much more frequent basis. When the SEC comes down knocking on your door, you better have an answer for them. And that's why a lot of companies are staying private for longer because there's access to capital in now so many other places besides the public markets. Why do you go public to raise money? But if there's alternative funding sources, why do you ever need to go public? And for that reason, Private companies have become now a nascent and increasingly accessible asset class. Now, let's just get over with the teaser and the thumbnail. What is the fund I'm talking about? It is called the Destiny Tech 100. They originally came on my radar because they launched a free share giveaway. This was the biggest free share giveaway of anything I had ever seen in my entire life. I believe they gave around 800 shares out to the public, which is kind of crazy just to give that away but you know was, i guess um they caught my attention because we're here talking about it but let's read briefly on this in the lead up to the tech 100s listing on the new york stock exchange which it did we'll get to the chart in a sec our goal was clear to broaden access to the private markets traditionally the playground of institutions and the rich by opening the gates early we aim to show that inclusivity and innovation are not just ideals but ideas to be met with action we are thrilled that so many of you are willing to join us and share our vision in an open equitable future one in which anyone can be a part of the growth story of the world's most exciting private companies and let me tell you what i did get some shares of this and the companies are pretty exciting Going into the portfolio details, we are going to talk about the ticker. The ticker is DXYZ. It is listed on the New York Stock Exchange, meaning if you trade on any reputable broker, they should be able to have access if you do want to buy shares in this company. The annual management fee is 2.5%. Now, for you mom and pop index fund buy and hold the S&P 500 concentrated in the NAC MAG7 companies that are kind of bullshit if you think 2.5 percent is high the door is to your left we do not care why is that because the typical funding structure for private equity is 2 and 20 <clears throat> meaning they're going to charge you 2 percent even if they don't make money and if they do profit they're going to charge you 20 percent this to me is much more reasonable i am going to give you direct exposure into private companies i'm going to charge you two and a half per two and a half percent because one, I sourced it, two, I bought it, three, I found it, four, I got it regulator regulatorily approved, and then I'm not going to charge you any money on the profit. To me, that is extremely reasonable. But getting back into the details of the fund, the Destiny Tech 100 is a closed-end management investment company registered under the Securities Act of 1940. They intend to invest in a portfolio of 100 top venture-backed private tech companies, providing everyday investors like you and myself <clears throat> access to private market leaders for the first time. This is why they were able to be improved because you were investing in an index fund of private companies that has a high annual management fee because of the nature of said companies. They have a current portfolio of 23, which we're about to get into, and they are targeting a portfolio of 100 companies. <clears throat> so, Getting into some of their holdings, SpaceX, Epic Games, OpenAI, 
Revolut, Class Dojo, Relativity Space, Tripe, ATOB, Instacart, Chime, Public Jeeves. Basically, if you're a millennial or a Gen Z and you use these companies, because I know a lot of you know these names, and sure, Impossible Food has kind of garbage burgers, but they're trying to make innovations in the space. This is a really interesting opportunity to get exposure to private asset classes played, both financial, Flexport, and then they're sitting on some cash because they still got to buy some stuff, right? Now, let's get into eligibility requirements. <clears throat> Number one, the underlying company must be vetted by institutional investors. They must have raised over 50 million from reputable US, most likely venture capital companies. Number two, it must have a healthy liquidation preference ratio. The company's outstanding preferred stock liquidation preference must be healthy relative to its current market capitalization. What does this mean by healthy liquidation preference ratio? In the event of hard financial times for any one of the underlying companies. There is something called a capital stack when you're talking about private and public companies, generally speaking. And when you talk about the capital stack, just know that in the event of default or bankruptcy, debt holders must be paid before equity or shareholders. When you invest in the Destiny Tech 100, you're investing in shares of private companies. But those companies have debt. Every company has debt because debt is used to bring forward future returns and future profits to deploy capital today. And these companies don't have profits, so they're using debt to get established. Standard for a company. Given that, <clears throat> the Destiny Tech 100 made a very good call, and they ensured that before being listed into the index, that the company does not have an overly high level of debt compared to a level of equity issued out to shareholders, such as you and myself. Therefore, that's something to keep in mind. Number three, no burdensome financial structures or heavy debt. Again, going back to the capital structure. Will you be knocked out in the event of default? Number four, no opaque foreign legal structures. I'm sorry if you have an LLC that you're trying to sell here in the public markets that's owned by an LP in the Cayman Islands that is ultimately your trust fund and you're just trying to siphon off money from some random guy here in Nebraska. Not cool. We don't want your shares. Go back to the Cayman Islands, my friends. Uh, number four, no unusually high turnover cultural health red flags. Basically, if the CEO is quitting and they keep getting a new one every six months, maybe something's wrong with the company. All right, <clears throat> investment strategy. The Destiny Tech 100 will simultaneously weigh heavily into two categories of companies, large capitalization, companies that are valued at 10 billion and above. Generally speaking, guys, those companies would go public, but as I was mentioning in the beginning of this video, companies are staying private for longer because it's more profitable to do so. Now, number three, <clears throat> or two. Medium cap companies, newer members of the quote unquote unicorn private company ranks valued between 750 million and 10 billion. These companies oftentimes, should they be productive, successful, continue to innovate, will yield about a 10 to 50% return. Three, governance. <clears throat> The Destiny Tech 100 Investment Committee will make the final determination on the inclusion, pricing, and weighting of the companies in the Destiny Tech 100 with the determination of fair value overseen by Independent Valuation Committee. Basically the board of directors, guys. It's just a few guys. <laughs> so, um, I spoke briefly on the rolling annualized returns, but... Just to briefly touch on this before I get into the charts and just, you know, where I think you should, might want to position this within your balance sheet. Uh, private companies oftentimes can produce a 10 to 50 X return on your capital. Um, that is the level of growth that we're talking about here. This isn't your normal everyday fund. And because of the level of return that you could potentially get from these asset classes, let's talk briefly on positioning size before we get into the chart. Should you invest your whole balance sheet into this fund? No. Should you take anything that I'm saying as investment advice? No. Should you talk to a financial advisor because this is solely educational? Yes. What am I going to do? <clears throat> I run a hedge fund. My hedge fund is multi-asset class, investing in equities, to fixed income, to cash, to real estate hard money loans, to cryptocurrency, to altcoins, and if you can hear it because I got a better microphone, there's a little bit of noise in the background because I'm mining freaking Bitcoin in my apartment. I'm also going to own private companies. 
I own some via Sweater Ventures. These are venture capital companies, and this, I think, is a good exposure to larger, more established private companies. In my personal balance sheet, we're going to hold 5% of the assets into DXYZ, large cap liquid private companies. We're going to scale in over a period of three to five years to build up a larger position size as the overall balance sheet increases. Should it outperform dramatically, just given the nature of the underlying investment, I personally don't plan on selling unless there's something seriously wrong. And that's just me. Happy to chit chat on a high level. Nothing that would constitute investment advice for any of you in the comments sections, but please, for something like this, and as far as better understanding your risks and goals, because I don't have your personal financial statement in front of me, nor your positions, I can't really help you, nor am I allowed to, or I want to. But I can tell you about the fund, so that's what we're going to do. Getting into the next chart. Um, I'm going to leave this as a link in the description. It is actually a breakdown of their performance and holdings. Uh, here is their annual report. And here is a breakdown of their holdings. Um, kind of went over a high level view of that at the beginning of the video, so we don't need to get into that. But to finish it off, because I do need to go to the gym, because I don't want to be a fat fuck. Here is the freaking chart, baby. Um, isn't it gorgeous? Look at this listed it really listed at five bucks but then it just shot up to eight at the open immediately ran up to 30 and that's when i knew i had to buy i didn't buy at 30 i waited mm. still have my caffeine just bear with me crashed down to about 870 ran back up in the after hours to 20 i enter here at ten dollars the perfect the best entrance and it just ran it up ever since. Uh, who knows where this price is going to go um, into the future? I candidly don't. What I do know is that from a flow perspective, there is going to be an immense amount of interest in the retail investor to get access to private companies, which they traditionally would not have the ability to do so. There are a few other providers out there that are accessing private markets for retail investors. The challenges with those funds is that they're illiquid. <clears throat> capital locked up for three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. Interval funds like the sweater fund, which you basically can't sell out of unless the underlying company wants to buy back their shares. Um, kind of a challenge if you have a liquidity need. I like this because it's liquid. I like this because it's private. I like this because it gives me a diversified alternative exposure to the growth of the U.S. economy and also the international economy because it's not just U.S. Um... And yeah, overall, <clears throat> this is the fund. Check it out. It's been on an absolute tear. I'm up about 100% since getting into my position. I can't say you're going to have the same amount of returns. What I can say is this is worth getting on your radar before everyone and their mom realizes it's out here. Um, if you like the fact that I brought this to you early, give me a subscribe. I did the same thing with crypto. I'm doing the same thing with this. Whenever something truly interesting comes up, I will make content on it. Not because I want to be some like YouTuber that's like out running about giving faux bullshit financial advice because like I, I work in the financial industry. Uh, what I want to do is educate you guys and stuff that I find interesting, things that I'm buying, <clears throat> and things that we want to do to make money because like you know, while I'm a lender by day and a hedge fund manager by night, sometimes in the morning I get a little rambly and I talk about the markets, and here you go. So, ticker symbol DXYZ for the Destiny Tech 100. Details are in the bio. If you thought this was helpful, share with your friends, get it on social media, because I don't want to pump their fund, but I just want people to know you can get involved in private equity without being accredited. Extreme, extreme amounts of risks by doing so. Peace out.